Hello everyone, welcome back. Hope you guys are doing well. So in this video, we are, as you can see, we are going to do some exceptions. Okay, now what do I mean by exceptions? Let me tell you that. So basically, if I were to summarize the past two videos, so in the in the video where we saw that how to find the coefficient of x when x is in the first term. So notice how it says x over here, okay? So the way to do that was that if you wanted to find a certain coefficient of x raised to any power, okay? So all you had to do was look for what n was equal to and look for the power that you want on x. So for example, if you want x squared, where n is five, so all you gotta do is five minus the required power of x, which is two in this case, and that's equal to three, so use r as three in the formula, and there you go, you will have the coefficient of x squared in no time. And if you want x bar five, the coefficient of x bar five, so you do five minus five, which means r is equal to zero, plug in zero in place of r, and you will have the coefficient of x bar five, okay? So this is the summary of this rule right here, that when x is in the first term, the value of r is n minus the required power of x. Okay, now what if it's in the second term? Again, notice how over here it says x is in the second term. Okay, there's a reason why I'm emphasizing on this so much, you'll find out in a minute. So in this case, it was even simpler, all you had to do was look for the required power of x. So if the required power of x is two, in other words, if you want the coefficient of x squared, you take r as two, whoops, sorry about that, and you plug it in the formula and you will have the coefficient of x squared. Or if you want the coefficient of x bar five, you plug in r as five and you will have the coefficient of x bar five, okay? So this is what it says. When x is in the second term, the value of r is the required power of x. Okay, now, what about the exceptions? Well, the exception is that when inside the binomial theorem, you have something that's a, that looks like a plus b, but it's not just x to the power one. It's it's maybe x squared or it's maybe it, it may be x cubed. Because in all the examples that we've done so far, regardless of whether it was in the first term or the second term, the power on x was just one, okay? So when the power on x is other than one, then all the rules that we've done just come crashing down, okay? And now we have to use something called common sense, okay? So we can do that, right? I'm sure we can. Okay, so how do I find the coefficient of x squared? So how about we don't rely too much on the formula or on the methods and we just try and see how the formula really works, okay? So remember, what we are basically looking for is the value of r, right? Okay, if somehow someone came and told us, okay, use r as four, okay? Plug it in and then you will have the coefficient of x squared. Okay, that would really solve the problem for us, right? So that's what we're really looking for. The value of r that we can plug in, that solves our problems, okay? So let's see how we can do that. So let's say we don't know what r is equal to, okay? So r is a big question mark right now. So seven c r, three raised to the power, seven minus r. This is what the expansion would look like, right? Without knowing the value of r. Two x squared to the power of r, okay? Now, at this point, you gotta really think, okay? Not like think re real hard, but like put some thought into it and see what should be the value of r over here so that at the end, we have x squared, okay? So two is eventually going to get multiplied by r, right? So what should you really multiply two with so that it remains two? And if you really put some thought into it, the answer would come out as one, okay? Because two times one, is equal to two, and that's that. That's also a problem, okay? So let's see what, what happens if we use seven C, if we use R as one, so it becomes seven C one, three raised to the power seven minus one, okay? We really don't care what that is, honestly. And two X squared to the power one, and see how this almost solves the problem, okay? So seven C one is seven, three to the power seven minus one means three to the power six, okay? So that's gonna be a really large number. So that's 729, and two x squared to the power one is two x squared. So that means ultimately when everything's multiplied, we will get x squared, okay? And that solves the problem. So let's work this out. Seven into 729 into two. So what we're looking at is 10,206 x squared. And the final answer is 10,206. And there you go. That solves the problem, All right? What do you think? Okay, now that's not the end of the question, sadly. Now we gotta see that what should be the value of r, okay? And in this also, I want you guys to help me out. What should be the value of r so that two x squared, once raised to that value, okay? X squared turns into six. So again, just think about it. What should two be multiplied with over here so that it becomes six? And again, if you really put some thought into it, the answer would come out as three, okay? And let's see what happens. So seven C three, 
3 raised to the power 7 minus 3, which is 4, and 2x squared raised to the power of 3. And this should work because 2x squared, the whole thing raised to the power 3, whatever the coefficient may be, the power on x will be 6. And that's exactly what we're looking for over here. Okay, so 7c3, let's work that out. 7c3 is 35. 3 power 4 is 81, but I don't want to risk it and just use a calculator instead. Yep, it's 81. Okay, and 2x squared, the whole thing cubed, is 8x to the power 6. And see what I mean? This solves the problem. 35 into 81 into 8. Okay, so we're looking at 22,680. Okay, so 22,680 x to the power 6. But since we just want to give the coefficient, so we'll stop at 22,680. And there you go. That's your final answer. Now, what if it's the same scenario, but instead of having x in the, f in the second term, rather, it's in the first term, okay? So again, here also, we're not gonna rely too much on the formula, okay? So we're just gonna think about it. So let's see, so we have 5CR, 2X square to the power five minus R, okay? And minus one to the power R. Now think about it. What should you have on 2X square over here, okay? What should you have on uh, as power on 2X square so that two gets multiplied by, okay, in fact, let's take a step back. What should two get multiplied with so that it remains two? The answer is one. Okay, so that means this five minus r thing should be equal to one. So five minus r, we want to be equal to one, which means what should r be equal to? r should be equal to four. That means if I plug in four as r, I should get the coefficient of x squared. So let's see if that works. So five c four, 2x squared into 5 minus 4, which is 1. And you can probably see where this is going. We will eventually end up with x squared only. So 5c4 is 5 into 2x squared to the power 1. So that's just going to be 2x squared minus 1 to the power 4 is positive 1. So now we're looking at 10x squared. And that means the final answer is 10. And just like this, we're going to see what should be the value of r or what should be the power on 2x squared which we can then use to determine the value of r so that we get x bar six. Okay, so again, think about it. What should you have over here? Okay, two x squared raised to, so that it turns out to be, uh, so that it, it turns out to be six. And the answer is, again, if you put some thought into it, the answer is that this should be equal to three. So that means five minus r should be equal to three, which means r should be equal to two. So that's exactly what we're gonna do now. Five c two, two x squared to the power five minus two, which is equal to three. Okay, and minus one to the power of two. Okay, so five C two is equals to 10. Okay, again, don't ask me how I know this. This is something you guys will also learn in no time. So two X squared, the whole thing cube is gonna be eight X to the power six and minus one squared means that that's gonna be positive one. So we're looking at 80 X to the power six, but since we just want the coefficient of X power six, so the answer is gonna be 80. And there you go, this is how this is done, okay? Uh, that's this is exactly what I wanted to cover in this video. I hope you've understood the concept. Now, if you really think about it, if you really think about the way that we have done this, using this method, you can pretty much figure out anything that you want, any coefficient of x raised to any power, okay? You don't really have to memorize what happens when x is in the first term, what happens when x is in the second term. And there's another rule coming, uh, not another rule, but another scenario coming, and that is when x is in both terms, okay? So we're just gonna be extending this concept into that also. So you will see how that works, okay, when we get to it. Anyway, so that's it for this video. I hope you guys understood and also enjoyed this. Uh, I enjoyed making this video, okay? I hope you also enjoyed learning it with me. And that's it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye-bye.